There is a book called Unbroken, but it's a story about a man who was broken by the Lord Jesus Christ and met Christ at the original Billy Graham crusade here in Los Angeles. This man is still alive after surviving a Japanese concentration camp and 47 days at sea. He also met Adolf Hitler at the Olympics. Let's go into his house here in the Hollywood Hills and I want you to hear his story. Louis Zamperini. Louis Zamperini, welcome to Haven Ministries, Haven of Rest. And uh, can you share your story with us? You were born uh, and raised not too far from here. Uh, well, actually, I was born in Oleon, New York, and my brother was just four years old. I was two years old, and we both had double pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, get your kids to California immediately, or they could die. So my dad and mother got on the train the next morning, and uh, a week later, we are living in Long Beach. Well, I, I, was always, I was always in trouble. That was during Prohibition, and I used to, I had things all worked out in my mind during the week. And then recognition, that was a big thing because when I ran, I didn't, I didn't think anybody in school knew me. Mm. But uh, when I came down the home stretch and passed this guy, uh, the students were screaming, come on, Louie. Well, I thought, God, that was the greatest thing. That That's ever me had. they're talking about. Oh, yeah, I thought, sure. I couldn't believe it. So, they, so recognition is important for young guys and young girls. And so after that, the recognition... Uh, and I started getting respect from the students. <laughs> and so as a, as a sophomore in high school, I ran a 957 two mile. Wow. And so, so that was the greatest race of my life. And then after that, I never lost another mile race for five years. And is that when people started saying, he's going to go to the Olympics? Right. And that plane wouldn't, it had a hard time flying on four motors. With one mm. out, it started mm. to drop. Mm. And then number two went out, and then we... We went down at, at an angle, hit the water at full speed. The plane blew up into pieces, and uh, there were 11 of us aboard. And three of us survived the crash. Mm -hmm. I got in a life raft and uh, started our drift. Mm. Mm. The, next, the next 47 days on the ocean. And uh, you and two others made it alive at the beginning. There were the three of us alive then, yeah. And the bomber strafed us with two machine guns for a half hour. It's unbelievable, but we were tangled up together uh, to begin with. And the bullets would miss our groin by an eighth of an inch, mm. armpit, 48 holes in the space that we were in, and nobody touched by a bullet. Mm. And the sharks swimming uh, all well, around this, you. Yeah, this was a, a miracle of miracles. And then there were sharks in the water, but... Uh, so I decided to get under the raft after the first two strafings and push my head as far below the surface as I could. And I could see the bullets coming through. When I came up, I knew the other two were mm -hmm. dead because too many bullets came through the raft. Mm -hmm. Oh, they weren't touched. You know, like, like Billy Graham says, when, when, you, when one man comes to the end of his rope and there's nowhere else to turn, he turns to God. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was what we did. We prayed. And then we were picked up by the Japanese and so uh, taken to the island of Kwajalein. We couldn't stand up or walk for four days. And this is called Execution Island. Mm. And uh, I found names on the wall of my cell that said, Nine Marines Marooned on Macon Island, August, 12th, 19, August 18th, 1942. A famous raid. Mm. But nine Marines were left there, transferred to Kwajalein for execution. Mm -hmm. So that's why we call it Execution, execution they, Island. Execute everybody that comes there. So our date of execution was set. Mm -hmm. How long were you in uh, prison camps, Japanese prison camps? Well, at the time I left home, I was two and a half years. I'd say uh, over, just over two years. Mm -hmm. The war's over. It took a toll on you. But you come back to <laughs> Los Angeles. The, the war would affect you. You were still affected, and you would have these nightmares in the middle of the night, and you were married, and, and uh, it, it, it got ugly sometimes, didn't it? Well, as I said, the nightmares started in prison because when you're tortured like that on a daily basis, yeah, I had nightmares. I'm always strangling the, the bird. But then that again, was the he name knew, of this knew, one guard, Well, he saw my fist clenched. He knew I wanted to strangle him, so he said, if I draw my sword, I must use it. 
So if I'd have hit him, he'd have sliced me up. Mm. So the nightmares were there. They followed me home every night. And then my wife um, went to hear Billy Graham. And uh, it took her two days to convince me I should go. And then that's when Billy Graham, uh, I said, well, when it says every head bowed and every eye closed, we're out of there. I started out, and then he said something in his message about when people come to the end of the rope, nowhere else to turn, they turn to God. I thought that's what I did. So I on the, on the raft. The, you thought I already did that on the raft. That's what I thought. I said I made thousands of promises all through prison, and, and that if I came home alive, I'd seek God and serve him, and I didn't. So that's what convinced me to go back to the prayer room uh, to see what was in store for me. Mm. And this fellow got me on my knees and started praying for me. And I made my decision for Christ. And while I was still on my knees, I knew it was all over. Mm. Through drinking, I'd forgiven all my guards, including the bird. Believe me, that was a miracle. Mm. And uh, so I had a whole new life now. Mm. Mm. And you didn't even know at that point your life would change so much, your future career, and you served the Lord the rest of your life for decades. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, the first miracle was my conversion. The second miracle was I haven't had a nightmare ever since. Mm. And, uh, and, the, and, of course, I, I, I immediately, I didn't have to taper off on anything. I just, it was like a razor cut. Mm. I went from one life to the other life in one in one second when I said I believe, mm. and uh, for never, after that never had another nightmare. Well, that was unbelievable. When I read when I read uh, Laura's un book Unbroken, it was so graphic. I thought I was going to have nightmares because it put me back in prison, mm. but I haven't had one, mm. and I doubt if I'll ever have one again. 